Two teams collide, but only one will survive. It's the destination vacation season of... Arena! Welcome to Arena, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sport. I'm Lee Rimmer, and today, once again, we are traveling on that road to this year's Tournament of Champions, where our teams will compete for an all-expenses paid week of fun in the sun. And last time on the show, Team Rednecks moved further down that road to destination vacation with a hard-fought yet emphatic victory over Team Nightfall. Now they're set to square off against a brand new challenger, Team Payback, and Guilty Gear X2, SOCOM 2 USAV SEALs, and Unreal Tournament 2004. We'll meet today's challengers a little bit later, but for now, Let's go to my good buddy Kevin in the console pit. Kevin! Thank you, Lee. Now, today our players will go at it in a classic fighting game that's got a next-generation facelift. It's Guilty Gear X2 on the PlayStation 2. Now, this features a bizarre cast of anime-inspired characters and an innovative counter-attack system that more often than not spells the difference between victory and defeat. So let's see what happens as we kick things off with Guilty Gear X2. What? And Guilty Gear X2 is underway, Kevin. Payback players will be playing as Venom. Red X will be playing as I know, and first up it's Cabal versus I'm freaking bad. And right off the bat, we see some excellent counter attacks, Lee, and as I said before, that can make all the difference between victory and defeat, and seems to be doing well for Cabal. Venom with that pimp stick, and I know with that Cabal guitar. Both teams evenly matched as their health ticks away. And Payback, our newcomers, always looking to make a statement here early. And it's going to be all over in just a moment as one hit does it. But round one goes to payback. Two. And round two up, Kevin. It's J Skills. And on the left, it's Inano. Looks like Ino pulled a move out of Manhunt. Oh, crap. Wrapping the wire around Venom's neck. And the guitar string being used by Ino. And the rednecks do not want to let our second round slip away here, Kevin. And Venom is in serious trouble. He's got to block. He's got to use those counterattacks. And I guess right now he's got to hide his face in shame because he just got his ass handed to him, Lee. One round to one, Kevin Payback versus the Rednecks. The Rednecks back on the board. Three. And round three is underway, Kevin. Ricky Mountain for Payback as Venom. Master Shake for the Rednecks as I know. And I know, with the guitar string, wreaking havoc. And it's not that I have, you know, any particular preference, you know, for either team, but I really hope Payback wins just so I can hear Venom make that victory groan. Uh, it's more like a, a victory sigh. Players jumping wildly off that dusty carpet. It's not a sonic boom, Lee. It's a sonic, sonic attack. attack. And both players are very close. This is definitely the closest match we've seen all day, Lee. But using that pull cue, Venom, as we like to call it, the pimp stick, taking it to her and takes her down. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh. Payback. Two rounds to one so far here in Guilty Gear X2, Kevin. Four. And round four is underway, Kevin. And Payback, two rounds to one so far, can take the console round with a victory here by Venom. These skills for Payback, hoping to seal the deal in the console round. But I know he's getting taken to it midair. Gazebo down, he's out, and the winner is D skills. And the Rednecks are reeling. Yeah. Well, we've yet to see a special move in Guilty Gear X2, but our newcomers, Team Payback, they get off to a great start with a 3-1 victory. And it wasn't a good sign for Team Rednecks as these skills of Team Payback he made two-time MVP Gazebo look like an absolute noob with a 30-second knockout. Now we're going to check in with Flo, who's standing by with a man himself, D-Skills. All right, D-Skills, what, what up? Good knockout, man. Thanks. Have you played that game a lot? No, not really, but... Uh... I played the Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, they're like similar to it, and like, I don't know, it just helped me to win. What was it about Street Fighter that helped you win in this game? What's the similarity? It's like a quick pace and you can like do a lot of combos, like especially up in the air, that's how I got them. Really. Well, I heard you are awesome at SOCOM 2 and that's what's going on to next. So yeah. does the other team even have a chance or you're just going to kick ass or what? Yeah, we're just going to kick their ass. Oh yeah, yeah. he's a confidence, <laughs> I love that. Well, it was great meeting you. Um, and we also talked to some of your teammates earlier, so let's check them out and his competitors, Rednecks. We knew each other since high school. These guys have known since uh, since uh, middle school. Yeah, middle, middle school. school. So since, since then, you know, every time we play games. This guy did school to go by. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, when EverQuest came out for PS2, I went to ditch school and go buy it. When SOCOM 2 came out, I did school and buy my network adapter and SOCOM. Every time a new game came out, I'm just a gamer nerd and I just play games too much. I don't sleep all, all day and like all night and this just guy, go to school. You can, uh, maybe you can log on to this guy. Like, I, I gotta go, oh man, I wanna play SOCOM. Four in the morning, this guy's on. Maybe seven at night, this guy's crazy. on. All the time, this guy's on. He's crazy. He's really good too. So like I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna win this because of SOCOM and we got all these games on our side. I just, I just like knowing that I just killed somebody and, and they probably got mad or something. I just like making people mad just when they play. I just want people to go, oh, I can't believe he shot me. You know, where'd he shoot me from? And stuff. It just gives me joy to think about that. <laughs> You're gonna lose. Trust me. Hey, they're good at SOCOM, but you know, I, I think they're done. Well, we're probably just gonna stick to our same strategy that we did before, and that's winning. There you go. Other than that, I don't think we need a strategy other than teamwork and winning. We yeah, won't stop winning. We're good at it. We're better than them, and uh, I'll see why we'll let up any points on them today. Uh, this is our third appearance on the show, and the first few times we've played against teams that seem like they're semi-retarded. Like, they didn't know what a keyboard is or something, because so that's only two seconds before I was bothered. It. The payback, we'll see what they're good at, and, uh, you know, payback is stupid. <laughs> So it looks like Team Rednecks has their work cut out for them because for the first time in their run, they trail in a match. But hey, we're just getting warmed up. And when we come back, we will break out the big guns with SOCOM 2, U.S. Navy SEALs, and later, we'll break out the bigger guns for Red Road Tournament 2004. It's all coming up as we move closer to Destination Vacation, and it's right here on Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Before the break, Team Payback mastered Venom's pimp stick and took the console round. And the word on the street is that our newcomers consider our next game their strong suit. So let's get to it with SOCOM 2, U.S. Navy SEALs, presented by the U.S. Navy. Now let's send things over to Kevin in the PS2 Control Center to get things going. Kevin. All right, thank you, Lee. Yes, SOCOM 2 is a squad-based shooter that puts our teams right in the middle of a deadly military conflict. Now, a coin flip before the show determined that Team Rednecks will be the SEALs and Payback will be the opposing force. Now, the mode is suppression, which in non-military terms means Team Deathmatch. Now, our squads will play three five-minute rounds, and the team with the most kills wins each round. Today's map is Frostfire, an oil rig stationed in the middle of the ocean. Now, the map features both indoor and outdoor environments, which allow for both close quarters and long-range combat. But enough of my jibba-jabba. Let's see what happens in SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs. One. And round one underway, Kevin. Our SEALs, the Rednecks, our defending champions, who lost our console round versus the opposition payback. And payback, supposedly, the masters here at SOCOM 2. And we've seen in previous episodes of Arena the Team Rednecks they tend to uh, come fighting hard in the first round, and then by, by the third round of SOCOM, they really get their strategy down and they take it easy. They try to formulate some sort of plan. We'll see if they start off that way this time. Fire, here they go. Get ready. Oh, oh shit. Gazebo draws first blood, though. J Skills retaliates right away and drops Gazebo with that M14. Oh, now you have to go out. Oh, shit. And I'm freaking bad. Strafes out, but takes it from both sides as Cabal finally gets the frag and brings him down. Ricky Montana taking some damage, brings down Master Shake, and he's still standing, half health. He finally goes down as Inano ends his little run. And I'm freaking bad. Usually a stellar performer here in SOCOM 2 is freaking dead. And down goes Jay Skills. Oh, dude. Tough to tell who's on top at this moment, Lee. It seems that they're evenly matched teams here in SOCOM. D Skills gets in a close quarters firefight. Right behind you, Bill. Right behind you, Bill. And a frantic firefight as Master Shake goes Rambo and just mows down every single member of Team Payback. There you go, Richard. I go to the fast. And Cabal with excellent twitch reflexes spins right around and mows down a member of Team Redneck. It only takes him a matter of seconds to get his crosshairs on the enemy. Inano takes down Jay Skills. He's doing pretty well for himself. He's got seven kills and two deaths. Well, I'll make that three. And that did it. Well, he's a SOCOM player. Two. And round two's underway, Kevin. Payback for the, as the opposition. Right. Rednecks is the SEALs. Redneck 
in a squeaker, take, took round one, but Payback says it's their game, and D-Skills better not be dead like that if he thinks they're going to win around. Nano taking some damage there, retreats momentarily, keeps his head out around the corner. Right. Excellent job, he backed out of the firefight when he needed to, and he got the kill on Cabal, but he's got an enemy behind him. There's no one right there. He doesn't notice him, does not spin around in time. And D-Skills does an excellent job mowing down three members of Team Rednecks in a row. J-Skills was there, gone for some support fire. And he goes down himself. He took a lot of damage in that firefight. It was only a matter of time, but I'm sure he's glad to be respawning with a full bar of health. Jade Skills with five kills and now five deaths evenly matched as Inano runs all over him there. Yeah. Tell me where he died, another guy. Right. And the strategic shatter really picked up dramatically here in this round, Kevin. It seems to be Team Rednecks and Oli. They come out with uh, well, a complete lack of strategy, and by round three, they really pick it up. And I think what separates Rednecks from other teams that we see here on Arena League is that they actually learn their opponent's strategy. They actually adjust their gameplay to the way that their opponents are playing. Minano's doing good. He's got a two-to-one ratio right now, looking for his next victim. Eight kills, four deaths. Oh, and Minano comes around the corner and gets blasted away with that shotgun. You hate play? Yeah, that's not good. And Cabal is the man to watch here late in the round. Seven kills, five deaths. Finally puts some points on the board for his team. The J skills goes down. It's taken down by Inano, and now, as we've seen, just like last round, Lee, a central spot of action as all eight players converge. All right. That was good, that was good. Oh, good. Sure. And Inano. A frantic race to the finish, it's gonna be close. Cool. Yeah. Three. Round three, best of three. Oh, one to one. And wasting no time as soon as it comes in. Master Shake with two kills right off the bat. There you go. Inano takes down Jay Skills, and Gazebo takes down Cabal. Oh, okay. Oh. Good, good. I'm freaking bad goes down for the seals. Master Shake, two kills, one death. And he spins around in time to land a headshot. Oh, dude, you guys, come on, dude. Gazebo taking a little damage as he strikes back and forth, but Cabal says, I don't think so. Drops his ass. And I'm freaking bad crouches to give his opponent a better shot at his face as D-Skills takes advantage of that. And the rednecks look like they might have a slight lead right now. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Come on, come on. Ricky Montana drops Gazebo and Master Shake. It looked like Master Shake was confused there momentarily. He actually squeezed off a few rounds at his own teammate. The J skills goes down, which brings his kill to death to seven to seven. Damn, we're, we're yeah. done, dude. Inano's really making it happen, though. He's trying hard for his team. His kill to death ratio is very high. He's scoring some serious points, as is Gazebo, 13 and eight. Hey, get off me. Get off, man. Another one, Cody. I know, I see him. There, see? I told you. And with a last minute push, Inano and Gazebo are on a killing spree. They're racking up points, Lee. They could be single-handedly or double-handedly taking this one for their team. Yeah, I'll shoot one-handed next time. I'm freaking bad on loads. He takes some serious damage, though. He pauses to reload, and he grabs one right before the bell sounds. Seven kills and four deaths for I'm freaking bad. Excellent showing by Team Redneck. And that'll wrap it up. Damn. <laughs> that was good teamwork. I lost that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Team Payback talked the talk, but they had a little trouble walking the walk as they apparently underestimated Team Redneck's prowess in SOCOM 2. Now it was close, but our defending champs came through in the clutch and emerged with the 2-1 victory. Now it came down to teamwork, and in the end, Gazebo and Inano, they took control of the game. So let's go to Flo, who's standing by with a co-man of the hour, Inano. That's right. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. It's amazing, but there was like this mad killing spree at the end, and you guys just went crazy. Break down each of the roles for me that your guys did. Well, one of us would usually find a group of them and lead them towards us where we were hiding out. And he'd be the sort of sacrificial lamb for them. So they'd all be shooting at us while the three remaining uh, teammates would go around the back and start to trap them in, sort of a death sandwich kind of thing. So it's, it's good for you that you sacrifice one man in order to gain your objective. Yeah, we usually get four to one ratios from kills to deaths, and it's very well. And, uh, you know, the guy who dies knows it's his role. It's a group effort, not an individual thing. So he's okay with it. And then are you going to take that same concept into Unreal and in Assault? Yeah, we're going to stick together as a team, stay really close, but not bunch up. We don't want to be one big target. We're going to watch other's backs a lot and just accomplish the goal and hopefully continue on in Arena. Oh, wow. They are not messing around. They're going for the big machismo. Lee? The tension is building in this match, and so far, both squads have refused to back down. A Team Red X, they have a slim lead overall. So whoever wins our next game will have a good chance at taking the whole enchilada to go with the death sandwich. Now, while our teams prepare for the final showdown at UT 2004, why don't you head to our website where you can catch a glimpse of the Hall of Champions and sign up to get your team on the show. Our final game is coming up right here on Arena.
Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, Team Rednecks served up a heaping plate of humility to Team Payback, who claimed they were going to show our defending champ how it's done in SOCOM 2. But this is still anyone's match. And the winner of our last game will move one step closer to destination vacation. Let's go to Kevin to the PC ring to get things started with Unreal Tournament 2004. Kevin. All right, thank you, Lee. Now, our third and final game today is Unreal Tournament 2004, the latest in the popular first-person shooter franchise. But this isn't just a rehash of last year's version, as players will find unique weapons, distinctive maps, and a brand new element, vehicles. Now, the mode is Assault, where one team tries to meet a signed objective, while their opponent, well, they try to stop them. Now, today's map is Fallen City, a post-apocalyptic wasteland that once stood as a bustling metropolis. Now, players will find multiple levels spread throughout the map, and they just might want to pay special attention to the barrels strewn about the environment. So let's see who will take the match as we head into Unreal Tournament 2004. One. And Unreal Tournament 2004 is underway. Kevin, first on the attack here in Assault, will be the red team, Team Rednecks, which of course means Payback Blue Team will be on defense. I'll push you guys get there. And their objective right now, Lee, is to destroy that barricade. Go right, stand next to the damn machine rocket set. Right. Hey, everybody defend We see Yanano's making his way down to it right now. Rocket launcher in hand, following the arrows. And the barricade has already taken heavy damage as Ricky Montana does his best to defend it, but does not. And Master Shake and Inano plow through that barricade. And they're on their way to the forward outpost. Each team has a series of objectives to complete. And right now, D-Skilled is trying to stop Rednecks from completing anything. And Master Shake, so far unopposed, he's destroying one of the locks on that gate. Master Shake has destroyed one of them. He now goes right to work on the second one. Gazebo's there. He's doing the same. And both locks are destroyed. Gazebo and Master Shake, excellent teamwork. And they'll make their way into the command center now, which they have to destroy as well. Make sure you hit the barrels by it first. And Gazebo and Inano round the corners, and they're heading down the ramps. And Inano just completed the next objective. Our red team, the Red Necks, moving nicely. Get back, dude. Ricky, go back. Now they must destroy the command center. And team Payback doing a great job so far holding them off, but that command center is very close to being destroyed, and Gazebo swarms in there, takes one for the team, and grabs the objective. With a time, three minutes and 16 seconds, they complete the ultimate objective. Nice job, guys. All right. Is that four minutes? Two. And we're right in round two, Lee. So 316 is the time to beat. Now we have payback on offense, the blue team. They're on the assault with the rednecks playing defense. Hey, they're coming. I got the model. You have the first one. And Lee, for anybody who isn't initiated, who isn't in the know, the Rednecks secured all the objectives last round, and the time that it took them to do it is the amount of time that Team Payback will have to do it as well. And they are now 20 seconds behind the time set by the Rednecks. Really? And Ricky Montana straights his way in, but he's got to dodge that turret fire and the rocket fired by Inano. Inano takes him down. d skills gets taken out as well. The barricade is moments away from bursting. Would someone just breathe on it, please? Shoot it, shoot it. I think I'm up there. Yeah, I'm down loud. And Cabal has completed the objective, the barricade has been destroyed, and they have secured the forward outpost, and now they're on their way to destroying those locks on those gates. Richard, are you in the turret? Yeah. They're running out of time, Kevin. 30 seconds left. 3 minutes, 16 seconds was the time to beat. And Payback, the blue team, is not looking good as if they're going to make it. We got this, guys. And the Rednecks are already calling victory, and by the looks of it, Lee, I think they're right. And Unreal Tournament 2004 is going to go to the Rednecks. Our season Unreal Tournament bets show why they are the re remaining, retaining, the re resigning, the, what is it, the R word? The reigning champions. <laughs> That's the most reaction I ever get out of Mark Chelsea. Oh my goodness, Ken. Well, Team Rednecks may be from a rodeo town, but they appear to be very comfortable in the big city as they assaulted the assault course with a blistering pace that Team Payback just could not match. So with the two points for this win, the narrow victory in SOCOM 2, and the higher cumulative score, Team Rednecks retain the title as arena champion. And on the strength of his gun-toting skills in SOCOM 2 and UT 2004, today's MVP is none other than Inano. Let's go down to Flo, who's standing by with a new king of the Rednecks. Give me five, man. Right. Great job. You Thank did you. awesome. You guys are concentrating so hard, I swear your eyeballs are sweating. A little bit there. <laughs> are you surprised to be MVP? Uh, I'm surprised a little bit because Gazebo's used to winning everything, and uh, we don't mind that much that he wins, but it's nice to you know get recognition for the other members of the team. I was watching you guys in the practice round, and you had seven minutes to complete the objective. 
and you didn't come anywhere close. And then when you actually played the game, you completed it in just over three minutes. What we did in the practice ride, we just messed around, found out where all the weapons were, and then just started shooting our own teammates because we don't want to reveal what we're going to do uh, to the other team so they know where to protect, protect. So we, you know, a little bit we reveal, but we don't keep the main thing under wraps. I just wanted to congratulate you and your team members. You did a great job, and we're definitely going to see them here again. Lee. They call that sandbagging where I'm from. All right, now we know what you guys are all about. Now, things started off a little slow for our champs today as they took a beating in the console round. And after the way Team Payback talked themselves up before SOCOM 2, Team Rednecks were really feeling the pressure. But like true champions, the Rednecks exhibited grace under fire and gunned their way to victory in our last two games. And with three wins now under their belts, Team Rednecks are more than halfway to the Hall of Champions in the battle for Destination Vacation. We'll see if they can make it four for four when they return to face a new challenger. And you know where? It's right here next time in the arena. Weeknights, late night, hold on tight. Get a load of this. At 11, go crazy with Video Game Mania on X-Play. The biggest video game event in the world. Then take a walk on the wild side of technology on Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. I'm Martin Sargent, and I like to ramble. But that was fantastic. It's back-to-back -back action tonight. X-Play at 11 and Unscrewed at 11.30. Only on G4 Tech TV.